Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and in today's video I'm going to be doing another empties video. And if you are new to my channel then please click the subscribe button, that would really help me out. Yes, yeah, so I've done a few of these empties videos now that you can um, have a look on my videos and check them out. I think the last one I did was, well the last time I filmed it was about two months ago. So I've got my bag of empties kind of getting quite full now. Yeah, so it's just a good way of me telling you what products, what beauty products I've used up um, sort of recently and what I think of them and whether I would repurchase. So the first three products that I've actually got were in my project pan. I feel like I may have talked about these in my latest project pan video but I can't really remember but I basically finished up the Kat Von D Lock It Primer. Um, I'm not going to repurchase this because I didn't really feel like it did anything. Um, yeah so it's just not my favourite primer but I used it up and it was nice while I used it. Then I used through this Revolution Pro Supreme Hold Finishing Spray and um, this is a great setting spray. Um, I probably might buy this again in the future but I've got quite a few setting sprays open at the minute so um, yeah I'm not going to buy this in the near future but yes I would buy this again. I also used up in my project pan the Lasting Perfection Concealer in the shade 1 Fair. Um, this is a really nice concealer. I've got another couple in my collection at the moment so I don't need to purchase any more. I've got one in the shade 2 that is also my project pan which I'm yet to go through but the shade's off for me so I need to mix it with another shade to make it work but yeah hopefully I can get through that one too. So then moving away from my project pan um, I've got lots of other empties so I don't know how to do this. Maybe I should do makeup empties first so um, firstly I used through this e.l.f. HD finishing powder. I can't remember the exact name but it's like the white sheer powder. I've also got two other loose setting powders at the minute so I don't really need to buy it but um, yeah I definitely recommend this one if you're looking for a nice translucent sheer powder. The e.l.f. one's really good. So next for makeup products I also use for another setting spray. This is also a revolution one. This is the Hyaluronic Fix. So it's a setting spray with hyaluronic acid in it so it does have some skincare benefits it helps to like moisturize the skin by it's uh, well, hyaluronic acid it helps the skin retain moisture so um yeah i've already repurchased this and got that one open so yes definitely recommend this and it's revolution so it's really cheap um so yeah this is really good definitely recommend you to buy that one next for makeup i used through i feel like this is in every empties video the Ordinary High Adherence Silicone Primer. I've just cut it open to get the last bit out. This is my favourite primer. Um, I'm sure if you've watched my videos before, you've heard me go on about this. It's a silicone-y one, but it, it's not clear. It's more like a cream, like a white cream. And yeah, it makes your makeup last all day. It's really good. So go check this out. It's also very affordable. Next, I've gone through another Giordana Sculpt & Go Contour Stick in the shade, I think it's light. I just love this stuff. Um, and this is also really affordable. As you can tell, I quite like affordable makeup. Student life. Um, yeah, I'm gonna repurchase this, but I've got to go through, I've got other contours in my collection that I need to use up first before I can buy another one. Next, I've got two mascaras. So I've got this Smashbox Super Fan Mascara. I really enjoyed this mascara. Um, it was a bit of a surprise actually, because I didn't actually go out and buy this or hear anything about it. It came in like a beauty box that I got. Um, yeah, and I was pleasant, pleasantly surprised. Um, it's a really nice mascara. I definitely would consider repurchasing in the future, but I've got quite a few mascaras open at the minute and they tend to expire within three to six months. So I want to use through what I've got and then definitely in the future, this will be on my radar. Um, it just makes the lashes look very lengthened and volumed and black and this doesn't smudge or flake it's really great but it's also not too hard to take off with like makeup remover because that's what I hate about usually waterproof mascaras that's that one's not waterproof but like or well, sometimes even when they're not waterproof if they're really like stay very well um, they're a pain in the ass to take off but that one's easy easy to take it off and I've also used for a benefit their real mini mascara this also came in a set I like the way that this looked on my lashes. It made them look, um, it was more of a natural look, very sort of long and wispy, um, but not much volume. But the reason why I didn't like this is, uh, it was, I don't know, quite a dryish formula. So you'd end up with like little flakies on your um, cheeks by the end of the day, it kind of like cracked off. So 
I didn't really like it for that reason and I wouldn't buy this um, again. And then next I've gone through some brow products. First two is the skinny brow pencils. So I've got a NYX one micro brow pencil in the shade taupe. This is one of my favorite eyebrow pencils and especially the like, skinny version brow pencil. Um, definitely recommend these. They're very comparable to the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Wiz, um, which I also own and very comparable. So, because obviously Anastasia Beverly Hills is quite expensive. If you're looking for a cheaper alternative, try this one out. I went for a Maybelline Brow Precise Micro Pencil in the shade Blonde. Very much the same. It does the same thing. Um, but I do like the NYX one slightly more. Probably because of the shade, not necessarily the formula. Oh, and also the me the mechanism on this, like it's a bit cheaper feeling. Like it doesn't, I don't know how to explain it. It just doesn't turn up as nicely as the NYX one or the Anastasia Beverly Hills. Then I also went through, uh, this is my favorite like brow pencil that's not micro. It's a Max Factor. I can't remember what it's called. Just like the Max Factor brow pencil in the shade Hazel. It's a very nice color that's quite, neutral or maybe leaning cool no it's probably neutral i'd say because i find a lot of brow products are very warm and although i do have warm toned hair obviously um for some reason i don't like having warm eyebrows i like them to be more neutral um so yeah this is a great one if you're like blonde or a mid-tone brown eyebrow check this one out i never hear anyone talking about this then next I went through, well I didn't actually go through this, but I just decided to toss it because it's really old and it kind of smells bad and I never liked it anyway. Um, this is a NYX eyeshadow base primer. I just found that when you apply this, it really bunches up and if you get it in your concealer, sort of in the corner of your eye, it just really mucks up your concealer and I didn't find that this made my eyeshadow last any longer so I wouldn't repurchase this. Then next I went through a Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Concealer in the shade, I think, it, oh, Ivory. Yeah, Ivory it says on it. I really love this. This is one of my Holy Grail concealers. Um, definitely check this out if you haven't already. So then moving on to more like skincare and well, I've got one hair care. I went through a mini version of this Coco Neve Like a Virgin hair mask. Um, this smells great. Um, it's really good. This is a very hyped product um, and I do think it, it's a really nice like hair mask. Um, I got this in an advent calendar. Would I repurchase? Maybe, but I'm not dying to repurchase it because I've got a L'Oreal hair mask that I really enjoy. Uh, so yeah, this is great. I would recommend it, but I just think, I don't know, I probably won't purchase it in the near future. Um, then next I went through some skincare products. I also got this in an advent calendar. This is Caudalie, I don't know how you say that. Uh, micellar cleansing water. I did not enjoy this. I used for it, but it stinks. Like it smells like, I, I don't know. I think it's meant to come from like vines. Yeah, cause it's made with organic grape water and soothing chamomile. To me, it smells like tomatoes and I hate, to, like, I'm not tomatoes. Like, you know, the vines, the vine tomatoes, like the green bit, that's what it smells like. And I really don't like the smell. It smells very much like plants. And also this wasn't very good at taking off mascara, like eyeliner and stuff like that I found. It was good on the skin, but I didn't really like this around the eyes. It was a bit too, it, st it stung a little bit. So yeah, I much prefer my Garnier Micellar Water. Then next I went for another Pixie Rose Tonic. You've heard me talk about this a lot if you've seen any of my videos. I really love this toner. Um, I use it like near enough every other day because I kind of alternate my toners with other pixie toners but yeah this is really good for sensitive skin great toner so next in my empties I went through this uh, moisturizer this is the ameliorite transforming body lotion um, and this is not just your ordinary sort of body lotion um, it's got alpha hydroxy acids in it um, so basically it's good for bumpy skin, dry skin, dehydrated skin, rough skin and ingrown hairs. I think it might have lactic acid in it too. Yeah, it does. Um, so basically what I use this for is, you might have this too, but well, I can't really show you because I've got long sleeves on. But on like the tops, the backs of my arms, I've got, I don't know what they call it, kind of like chicken skin. Um, I feel like the technical name, I mean I'm completely going to butcher this, but it's something like keratosis pilaris or something like that. Don't know how you pronounce that whatsoever but it's basically like where you have little bumps they're not spots but they're like bumps on the skin and your skin feels rough 
um, when you touch it. You can get it anywhere on your body, but people mostly tend to get it on their arms. Like, look, I think like one in 10 people have it, so it's very common. It's to do with like the keratin production in the skin, and for some reason, it like builds up and clogs the pores. Um, so it makes the skin feel bumpy. I mean, I'm not a scientist or a doctor or whatever, but that's just from what I've done from my research online, what I understand it to be. Um, but yeah, this is just very good at almost like exfoliating the skin, but also still moisturising it. And also I forgot to say, because of like that skin condition, it makes this, like the bumps are kind of, it makes your arms kind of look red and blotchy. Um, yeah, so this just helps with um, treating that condition. And I do, I do notice a difference, but you have to continuously use it. Like I've stopped using it and it kind of comes back. It, it never gets rid of it completely, but it definitely calms it down. And I feel much more confident wearing sort of strappy tops and no sleeves when I use this cream. So it's quite pricey, this cream. I feel like it was about 18 or 20 pounds. Um, I've obviously cut it off, so it was bigger, but it's quite a pricey cream, but it is worth it if you do have a condition like that. Yeah, so the next product I went through is a Mario Badescu drying lotion, the plastic version. Um, it also comes in a glass bottle, but plastic's more convenient because you won't smash it with travel and stuff. Uh, yeah, I love this. It's just like a spot treatment. So you get a Q-tip, dip it in, dab it on your spot, and it zaps the spot. Um, it's very good at drying out. Like if you've got a big juicy spot, it's good at drying it out. Um, but yeah, I've repurchased this already. I will probably continue to repurchase it. It's really good. The only thing with this though is because it is drying, though it really calms down the spot and helps it go away quicker, you are kind of left with like a dry patch of skin where the spot was. Um, but obviously if you're moisturising and doing other things in your skincare routine, that's completely fine. Then the final product I went through is the Body Shop Hemp Hand Cream. Um, it doesn't smell like cannabis, so that's good. It just kind of has a bit of a... Oh, there's a tiny bit left in it. It's like a thick hand cream. It kind of smells like, I don't know, plants, but not in like a gross way like that micellular water was. Um, and yes, yeah, it's just a really nice hand cream. I got it because I suffer from eczema and I heard that hemp oil is meant to be good for curing eczema. I say curing, there is no cure for eczema, just things can help improve the skin condition. Um, so yeah, I got a lot of skin conditions, don't I? Um, this has helped, it hasn't, it's not a miracle cure, but it's nice and it hasn't aggravated the situation worse because that's what I find with a lot of products, I have to be careful, I can't use like hand creams with like artificial fragrances and other nasties in it, I have to be very careful because I mostly get the eczema on my hands, I have to be very careful what I'm using on my hands and this didn't make it any worse so if you have sensitive skin uh, or very dry hands, it's it makes the hands feel very moisturised and nice. So I would recommend this. Um, they also do a bigger size tube. It's slightly different packaging, but it's exactly the same formula inside. So that completes my empties products. I hope you enjoyed hearing what products I've gone through and whether I would repurchase or whether I have already repurchased. Um, if you did like it, then please thumbs it up. And once again, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Um, I make roughly one video every week that usually goes up on a Sunday. So um, yeah, stay tuned for those by subscribing.